This is Story Greenlight, and today we're going to be talking about some new experiments we've got going down, plus what the heck is a green light and why it's so incredibly important for you. What is up, my friend? My name is Jeff Barch, and this is Story Greenlight, where we're all about empowering online creators like you to spread your message to the world and create the impact that you were put on this world to make. And if you are a longtime member of the Story Greenlight community, you rock. Glad you're here. And if we haven't met yet, uh, here is a bit of background on yours truly. Uh, as I've said, my name is Jeff Barch, and my main background is in broadcast television editing. I spent over 20 years editing broadcast television in Los Angeles for Apple, ABC, Universal, uh, NBC, Disney, a whole bunch of others. And thanks to COVID, I'm still doing that uh, on a freelance basis during certain parts of the year, doing that remotely. And uh, we sold our house in California. And we moved to the great city of Cleveland, Ohio, to be closer to family. So that's where we are right now. Uh, I am a published author, and um, I've been featured in the USA Today, Time Magazine, Associated Press, multiple textbooks. Uh, it, I tell you, it was really kind of strange doing a Google and seeing my and seeing myself being referenced in textbooks. It was the strangest thing. But uh, other than that, I've built online businesses that have supported customers in over 40 countries across six continents. And I am all about helping people like you communicate your message to the world. That's what I'm all about. And I believe that you matter, your message matters, and that the world needs to hear what you have to say. Like any good story, there are, there, there are plot twists and there have been plot twists going down. Uh, <clears throat> You can look up Story Greenlight on YouTube and you can see that I started a YouTube channel in 2017, at the end of 2017. And I started out making content. And that first, the, the first videos that I did, actually a bunch of those videos were, they, they were literally done on my lunch breaks from whatever editing gig I happened to be doing at the time. And man, oh man, <clears throat> Talk about not knowing the learning curves. Uh, sometimes you just get into something and you don't know what you're getting into. Uh, you don't know what you don't know, and there's no way to <laughs> there's no way to know what you don't know when you're going into it. So there I was. I mean, like the the first video, I literally put my put my phone on a stand and stuck it on a table in the middle of the courtyard, and my on camera delivery was. My, my energy level was just two notches above dead. No pulse. It was, uh, it's a little horrifying to me to watch that now. But at the same time, you do the best we can at the time. So I got into a rhythm of cranking out content, started building some momentum on the channel. And as that built, I was taking what I'd been, what I'd been learning in my years in Hollywood and putting that together with what I was doing and learning on YouTube. And I put that into, I, I started helping other creators uh, as a consultant. So I was doing more and more consulting. And eventually it got to the point where there was more business building that came from the consulting side of things than from just making and releasing videos online. And so I ended up doing less and less of that. Because the fact of the matter is, a lot of people think that, oh, well, hey, if I just make videos, if I just make videos and put them up on YouTube, then I will automatically make money. Sort of, asterisk, you know, I mean, if you do it in a consistent way and you do it the right way that YouTube wants and the algorithm gets a hold of and a whole bunch of people click on your ads, yes, you can make money. Um, most people do not make a lot of money just by doing that. More money comes from the business side and actually applying the business side of things across the board. And the farther I go in business, the, the more I see of how the online world works, the more I've come to realize that even though business building is important, and I firmly believe that digital creators need to have at least foundational knowledge of business, 
beyond just the doing of their thing or what they're or whatever they're creating content about. <clears throat> the fact of the matter is the way the online world is working right now, it is important to have that regular content, both in order to g- gain a platform and to grow organic traffic, but also, frankly, to, uh, to introduce more people and get more people to see that, oh, you are doing, you, you do know what you're doing. You are putting co- content out regularly and, oh, okay, we know you, we like you, we trust you. So it's a double pronged, you know, it's a two edged s- sort of a thing for the need to have that regular content. And I've been seeing that. And um, this is me stepping up to do that. It's uh, where I'm experimenting with some new formats on things because frankly, building business means becoming the person that does hard things that other people won't do. And I'm a firm believer in that. But the thing is, doing the hard things means different things to different people. And for me, man, it, 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 it's, such a, it's such a challenge because my entire background in my career has been obsessing over the details of every single frame of whatever piece of broadcast content I've been hired to shape as an editor. And, and knowing that it will be seen by millions of people who incidentally may just <laughs> probably will instantly forget that they see it when, as soon as it flashes on, on their screen, but that's a whole other discussion. But the fact of the matter is, I love getting into the weeds and I love taking the time to pay attention to details and do all those and do all those things that is not sustainable when it comes to uh, when, when it comes to the way that I have created a lot of the content on the, you know, that that is associated with Story Greenlight. And it doesn't mean that I'm not going to be creating any more produced pieces. It's just in order for me to be of the best service to you, I got to keep putting out content and it has to be in a sustainable sort of a way. So working on this in more of a uh, talk, you know, a longer form talking and a podcast style format. So We'll see how we'll see how that goes. And the idea is to get more content put out regularly, taking less of my time so I can still oversee everything else that I'm responsible for. And frankly, the thing is, I have to get over myself. It never the journey of getting out of our own way. It never ends. And this is not just me talking from my own experience. It is uh, pretty much anyone operating at any sort of high level in the creative world or outside the creative world. We are always our own biggest bottlenecks and getting out of our own way is one of the biggest challenges that we will ever take on. And the other thing is, it always kind of made me scratch my head uh, in, in the early days of the, of the YouTube channel where people would say, yeah, I just love watching your stuff at one, one and a half times real speed or two times real speed. And I, was, I would go, I would think to myself, please don't. <laughs> I put a lot of it, I put a lot of time and attention into the pacing and the rhythm and the feel of things. And you're just going to throw that out by the window by hitting the two X button. Yeah. You know, but the fact of the matter is I believe that I believe that story green light can be of the greatest service to the greatest number of the right people by communicating ideas, not by putting together fancy edits. So there's that. And if you want to put this puppy on 2x speed, hit that button and let's roll. So yes, I don't have everything else. I don't have everything worked out at this point. Uh, not everything is set in stone. But the fact of the matter is, when we're moving forward in our creative journeys and in our business building journeys, we have to take the next step. We don't even need to know. There, there is no way that we can know all the steps that will happen, all the steps that we have to take, which is why you just got to keep taking the next step over and over and over. You can't wait until all your ducks are in a row. If you wait for all the lights to be green at once, you will never get moving at all. Speaking of green lights, this bring us, brings us to the whole idea of the green light as a concept. And, and, and I'm talking about the concept of a green light, not, not, not the 
green, not the physically green light on a traffic signal. Um, but we'll get into we'll get into the whole traffic signal thing in a minute. I mean, it's literally I literally chose it to be the logo for a story green light. But the original idea of green light was uh, it's become very well known in Hollywood. And in any context where you need people to give you permission and give you empowerment to move forward. A lot of the time, it, it, was, it was most well-known in Hollywood, uh, where technology had not really progressed to the point where anyone could have access and anyone could be a content creator. You know, And in the past century, when all this technology was just coming into existence, you had to have incredibly complex equipment. And then that, that and, and expensive equipment in order for radio shows to work, for television broadcasts to work, for anything like that to work, certainly for, for film shoots to work, anything like that. It required large, bulky, expensive equipment that required experts to operate it. And so entities would gather this equipment and these skilled technicians and creative people and then they would they would go out to the content creators of that day and those content creators would come on their hands and knees to a radio network to a television network to a movie studio and say please sir may i please have access to your platform you know it's like the i'm i'm thinking of the scene in an orphanage where is it Oliver Twist or Tale of Two Cities where it's like where, where the boy is holding up his bowl of soup and says, please, sir, can I have some more? That, that kind of a thing. It was like that. And in, in, in many ways, it still is at the highest levels. Uh, and this also applies to media in terms of traditional publishing, print media, all, all the things. And so you as a content creator would need permission from someone from a third party gatekeeper who would listen to your pitch and most times would say no. But on the times they would say yes, they would say, OK, we give you a green light to take your story, take your message, take your show, take your drama series, your whatever to get your manuscript, fill in the blank and use our resources and put it out into the world across our platform. And everyone was wanting to get that green light from that third party, from that studio executive, from the publisher, from whoever that gatekeeper happened to be. So, of course, as we all know, technology is the great game changer. And it has been the great it has been the game changer literally for centuries, ever since ever since the written word was physically written down by monks and scribes. And then along comes this guy named Gutenberg who invents this thing called the printing press with movable type. And all of a sudden you have technology that can mass produce media that used to require hours and hours and hours, even months or even years of physical labor just to make one copy. Technology has always been the accelerator. And obviously that's happening right now. We, we literally, anyone can take, can, can pick up their phone hit record, hit upload to a place like YouTube, and anyone can be a content creator. And millions upon millions of people are doing exactly that. And now you no longer need to ask permission from a third party to put your content out in the world. The game has been flipped upside down, and that is why the logo for Story Greenlight is literally a traffic signal flipped upside down with the green light on top. The game has been completely turned up on its head. Now, there is another idea when it comes to the concept of green light that goes beyond just permission. And this is where things get a little tricky. This is, this is really where the rubber meets the road for creators. Uh, and that's the idea of empowerment. And so think of it in terms of when you're driving and you actually have a traffic light. The light turns red, you stop. The light turns green. Now, you got the green light. You have permission. But in order for the car to move forward, you actually need empowerment to get that motion going. You need to step on the accelerator. And 
if you're stepping, if you have your foot on the brake, you need to take your foot off the brake too. And then you need to step on the accelerator. And the, and the thing is, as creators, there are a lot of things. There are, there are some pretty significant things that are putting its, putting its collective foot on our collective creative brake or keeping us from stepping down on that accelerator. You know, in the old days, a lot of those obstacles were not something that the content creator had to worry about. Yeah, that's the flip side of getting permission from a gatekeeper with a big studio or platform or network or something behind it, because then the, their machinery is all in place. They're, you know, it's, it's all ready to roll on the studio's behalf, the studio slash the creator's behalf. But now if it's all up to us, we do have the tools, we do have the permission, but we're not going to get empowerment from a third party. The third party, uh, the, the third party ends up being us that gives the empowerment. And that's where you start looking into the idea of human psychology and motivation. And anyone who thinks that that's not a big deal has not been thinking about it very much for very long. Because we've, when it comes to content creation and putting your message out into the world, please believe there are huge obstacles. There are foot. There, there are things that stick their collective foot on our on the brake to keep us from moving forward. And I will say one of those things is the tools. Now, I you know the fact of the matter is tools are easier than ever before to use. I mean. It can literally be just holding up the phone and pressing the red button to record. Or I'm speaking into a microphone that's going through a whole other audio system and all the things. And those tools, if you don't know how to use them, they can be into, they can feel intimidating. The fact of the matter is, when I first started my YouTube channel, here I am, I mean, working with $100,000 editing systems working on multi-million dollar shows. And when it comes to me thinking about starting a YouTube channel, I literally did not know what button to push to start recording on the DSLR that I had at the time. And that actually held me back for a while. I mean, I, that's why I actually started using my phone to shoot my initial videos on the YouTube, on the Story Greenlight YouTube channel. But, you know, you get past that. You have to push yourself to get past that. So give yourself some grace. Yes, the tools are easier to use than ever before, but the more features that the tools have, the more intimidating those tools can become. The fact of the matter is the horsepower, the, the, the muscle power, and just the sheer know-how of, how, of knowing how to use an old school camera crane or even, uh, or even a modern uh, motion control crane that you can hang a fifty or hundred thousand dollar cinema camera off the end. That is that is no joke. Those take experts to run. But you know what? Even if you say, "Hey, I just want an aerial shot from a mini drone," well, there there is still a learning curve from that. So give yourself some grace. Tools do take some time to master. You do have to be. You do have to keep pushing yourself forward in terms of empowering you there. Then there are other obstacles. Uh, the idea of shifting barriers of entry to become a content creator. If anyone can do it, then you get a lot of people coming in and that raises issues all and all of itself, all of its own. Because if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. So, you know, that's the argument for doing something hard and standing out from the crowd so that's basically what the modern creators have to do because there are so many people. It is so easy to, to create content these days. Everyone is doing it. So uh, how do you stand out? How do you stand out from doing that? Especially given the fact that as technology progresses, any, any medium, and this applies, this applies to any medium, not just digital media, but also the way people have watched film, television, 
listen to radio, read books, all that stuff. Audience expectations evolve as any platform evolves and matures. What was acceptable, what people found acceptable as a general audience on YouTube when in the early 2000s, when YouTube was just starting out, most people are not going to be okay with that anymore. A, a more traditional media example is if you look at the style of movie trailers, you look at movie trailers even 20 years ago to uh, they still to modern movie going audiences minds. If you watch a movie trailer from the early 2000s and you get the voiceover guy saying in a world where all movie trailer voiceovers sound the same, blah, 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 you know, all that kind of stuff. It was actually, it was actually what was expected at the time. Audiences have changed. That style has been overdone forever now at this point and audiences are over it. So that's why movie trailers are so often taking on a different approach. This happens in every medium. And so when it comes to empowerment with our own content, we can sometimes find ourselves feeling inferior when it comes to our content creation because, oh, well, the people who are standing out, the people who are doing things really well, they got really fancy gear and they've, they're, they're doing all this stuff and they're doing it at such a high level. How could I ever do it? We would all be selling ourselves short if we didn't admit that that exists and that's an issue to be addressed. That's some of the biggest stuff that gets in the way of us as creators when it comes to empowerment. And that's really one of the things that I want to be focusing on moving forward with content here at Story Greenlight. Uh, we're going to be talking, uh, there, there will be solo content, yours truly, and there will also be guest-driven content. And we're going to be talking about tools, going to be talking about techniques and ways to shortcut things with, with tools and techniques, but also about what our guest creators have learned and how to get past those obstacles, how they've gotten past those obstacles and how we can do the same thing. I am really, really glad that you're here. If this content is helpful, make sure you hit the subscribe button or the follow button wherever you happen to be. And if you want to take your creativity and your content creation to the next level, you can get started at storygreenlight.com. That is storygreenlight.com.